Today we're going to make an outdoor kitchen with concrete countertops. I'm going to use my table saw to rip down strips of melamine that are 4 inches wide and also ones that are 2 inches wide. I'm going to use these strips to make both the sides of the mold for the countertops and the inside mold for the shallow sink. I'm going to rip down a piece of dry erase board that I bought at Home Depot to use as the bottom of the mold for the sink. I cut the 4 inch wide strips to the appropriate lengths to frame the outside of the countertop. The 2 inch wide pieces will be used to frame the sink. I'm making the countertop to fit in a specific location, but you could make the countertops as long or as wide as you wish. Just make sure you don't make it too heavy. I'm going to assemble the mold using a glue gun and some scrap blocks of wood. I ran a bead of hot glue all the way around the outside of the mold. I measured and marked the location for the sink and then glued the pieces for the sink mold into place. I only put hot glue on the inside of the mold because I'm going to use silicone to seal the mold from the concrete. I'm going to use brass pipe fittings to make a drain for the sink and I'm just going to hot glue them in place. I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom of the melamine mold which is going to allow me to put a pipe in there which is going to be used to feed water into the faucet. I sealed all of the corners and edges of the inside of the mold with silicone. I also made sure to cover up any exposed end grain where water could soak into the particle board part of the melamine. I'm going to use one and a half inch thick rigid insulation to reduce the weight of the concrete countertops. I screwed the insulation to strips of plywood so that it won't float up out of the wet concrete. I sealed the pipe joints that are going to be submerged under concrete with silicone. I used steel mesh to reinforce the concrete. And I cut it in such a way that I could actually poke the ends of the wire into the rigid foam insulation which would hold it in place. It's always a good idea to double check the entire mold to make sure all parts are nice and sealed. Now I want the concrete to be a nice dark gray, so I'm going to add half a bottle of Quickrete liquid cement color to each gallon of water that I use. I glued some sanding pads down to the melamine mold because I'm going to use an orbital sander to vibrate the concrete later. I use Quickrete countertop mix for this project and mix each bag one at a time using the water that I had already mixed in with the liquid cement color. Once the mold was about three quarters of the way full, I added in the reinforcement mesh. It's important to make sure that concrete gets all the way underneath the rigid insulation. It's helpful to have a second set of hands for this project so that one person can push the concrete into place while the other person mixes it and shovels it in. I placed an orbital sander onto the sanding pads that I had glued down to help vibrate out any air bubbles. I used a scrap piece of wood to screed the top which helps level the concrete. I didn't want the concrete to cure too quickly because that can cause cracking. So I covered it with some plastic so that it wouldn't lose water too fast. I also periodically lifted up the plastic and sprayed it with a hose to keep it nice and moist. I waited four full days before removing the mold. Since the mold is only held together with hot glue, I could twist the countertop and break away those bonds before flipping it up. The only thing really holding it securely into place was the brass pipe that had gone through the hole in the bottom piece of melamine. The hot glue peels right out, but I needed to use a drill to help weaken the melamine before prying it out. I rushed this job a little bit and left a few too many air bubbles in it, but no worries, I just mixed up some really wet concrete and then rubbed it right into the holes. Once that had cured, I then used my orbital sander to sand it all smooth. I made the base out of cinder blocks, but I wanted to make sure they were nice and level. I'm going to use quick wall surface bonding concrete, not just to skin the outside of the cinder blocks, but to also create a nice level foundation for them as well. Once I got the blocks level with the help from some plastic shims, I then used the quick wall to seal the bottoms of the cinder blocks. I'm going to use Quickrete fast setting mix to create the cores for the stacks of cinder blocks. 
It's a really easy to use product which requires minimal mixing. But I, because the holes are relatively narrow, I'm only going to pour about two bricks high worth of concrete at a time. Once the concrete cores had cured, I then mixed up another batch of the quick wall and then applied that to the outside of the cinder blocks. It was pretty hot outside, so I made sure to keep the quick wall nice and moist as it cured. The sink and countertop weighed about 340 pounds, so I wanted to make sure we had plenty of hands to help move it so that we didn't smash any fingers. I used Quickrete anchoring epoxy to bond the tops of the cinder blocks to the underside of the concrete countertops. I used construction adhesive to glue L brackets to the insides of the columns so that I can make some wood shelves. I made the shelves out of tropical hardwood decking in 2x4s, held together with stainless steel screws. This type of decking is quite hard, so I made sure to pre-drill the holes so that I wouldn't break the soft stainless steel screws. We ended up deciding to do a second coat of the quick wall, this time to focus really on getting it nice and clean and flat, and also to cover up parts of the L brackets. This way the shelves slide right in and you only see wood. I made the faucet out of brass pipe fittings, and I made sure to check that all the fittings I was using were lead free and suitable for potable water. I didn't like the color of the faucet handle that I got, so I took it apart and spray painted it. I brushed pipe dope onto the fittings before screwing them together. Yes, it's really called pipe dope. Once again, it's important to make sure you're using products that are suitable for potable water. I sealed the countertops with Quickrete waterproofing sealer. The sealer penetrates into the surface of the concrete and it makes water bead right off of it. I built this kitchen around an existing spigot and I added a two-way splitter so that I could still water plants and such without disconnecting the faucet. I added a short piece of hose to the drain pipes which then fed into a watering can so I could reclaim the water from the sink. I've been using this outdoor kitchen both for cooking and also as a potting table as well. For more detailed instructions, check out my website. And if you want to see what I'm working on next, be sure to follow me on Instagram. If you want to learn more about the concrete products I use, go to quickcrete.com. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Bye.